With a teaser for Netflix Vania Nocturne released some time ago, I often see and hear how people hope and even claim that they will do it right this time. That after booting Warren Ellis and Eddie Shankar, that they hope this follow up is going to be more faithful. My first question is, in what way will this show be faithful? Not only is the sentiment misguided and unreasonably optimistic, but it also borders on delusional. The reason I say this is that the law of Castlevania was greatly altered on a fundamental level that any future takes will have to. 1. Completely ignore what came before. This is impossible as they have chosen to market this as a sequel slash reboot. The fact that they refer to this as both is basically Netflix trying to hedge their bets with whatever fan bases they're trying to cater to. 2. Acknowledge the previous series. This is more likely to happen. Except Netflix also doesn't want to do that as they wanted to put distance between them and both Alice and Shankar. Especially since the latter attempted to file a lawsuit he lost or so I heard. So for anyone expecting the pointless vampire lesbian couple to show up, I for one do not believe that will happen based on the second point. Not to mention they were created under Warren Ellis. What's the story going to be about? At this time, there is only speculation and rumor, but for anyone expecting a faithful or even a respectable adaptation of Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, you need to temper your expectations and vanquish the thought. The two points I highlighted are the reason why it's impossible. Alucard for one. Netflix and Alice have already altered Alucard's character on a very fundamental level to the point that this take comes off as an emotionally crude imitation of his original counterpart who is more disciplined and dignified in comparison. Keep in mind that they already altered everything else such as his presence where he heard his mother's final words, not the butchered version the show presented, his vampiric bloodline being kept in check by his human side. This is why Alucard chose to seal himself away to honor his mother's memory and not do the humans harm. Not to mention the fight against Dracula and his horde became the duty of the Belmont clan. The struggle with his bloodline was absent throughout the entire show because the writer and I even dare say so-called Castlevania fans failed to understand this was what also made Alucard unique. The fact that they tried to make other vampires more morally grey and quite honestly even made a pathetically laughable attempt to redeem this vile creature diminishes Alucard's own struggle and uniqueness. The writer believed himself bigger than the story he was meant to adapt and as a result the complete and utter destruction of Alucard's character was fully cemented back in season 3. The writing itself did the show no favours either. Should he show up in Nocturne, he will never be anywhere close to his original counterpart because of some of what I have mentioned. While they will try to imitate the plot of Rondo and Symphony on some level, it will never carry the same gravitas compared to the actual story. As for Richter and Maria, we know nothing of them at this time aside from a teaser and a screenshot. After how they degraded Trevor's character and made Cypher a boring, insufferable Mary Sue, I'm willing to bet that Richter and Maria will be Netflix Trevor and Cypher 2.0. It's not like today's crop of writers are getting any better as we roll into the new year. If it was, we wouldn't have gotten Blood Origins, the gift that no one asked for. Now who are the villains? Because of where the story takes place, Shaft, Ulrox and possibly Gallimoth are the potential villains. Ulrox is a tricky one as in the original lore, he is in it for himself and holds no allegiance to anyone, not even Dracula. They may alter Shaft's motivation or even backstory like they did with Gary Stu Isaac who may as well have been Warren's fanfic OC. Dracula's role in this is still unclear. If he goes evil again then what was the point of his and Lisa's resurrection? Another theory is that he may be controlled and manipulated by Shaft in the series. The amount of excuses that will be drummed up to justify this nonsense is why despite my contempt for Alice Vania, I still believe that this version of Dracula was better off dead. I have also heard that this is supposed to take place during the French Revolution. I know nothing of the French Revolution or its historical accuracies but anything to do with history, the last people I would ever trust are Netflix themselves. Given how they blanket demonized an entire faith in the last series, I wouldn't be surprised if they attempt to do so again along with pushing their obnoxious propaganda like they did in the last series as well as have the whole who are the real monsters rubbish that helped ruin the last show. 
The last show was a Castlevania skin trying to be the next Game of Thrones with low effort and hackneyed obnoxious writing. But people today are easily entertained with flashy animation, fight scenes and MCU style dialogue and will give zero thought to the actual story, respect to the law or the feminist and social justice propaganda Netflix is famous for. This is the reputation they've built for themselves and people are still infuriatingly naive to believe that they will do these stories justice. Unlike the majority, I am not optimistic and for very good reason. Now will this show be faithful to the actual law? No. No it won't. If you want a more in-depth reason why my Wasted Potential video actually covers this reason even further, will this even be a good show on its own merits? The new writer they have is best known for TV dramas and has zero familiarity with the Castlevania law to my knowledge. Couple this with names like Ted Biasali, The Deeds Brothers, Kevin Cold and of course Netflix themselves are still involved 